with this wide receiver movement. Who needs Higgins the most? Would you go Joe B, Josh Allen, Patty Mahomes? I mean, I think this is obvious and easy. It's Patrick Mahomes. Who needs him the most? He's the only one who doesn't have a true number one receiver. I, I don't know how good T. Higgins will be away from Jamar Chase, but I know that he's better than what Patrick Mahomes has been um, dealing with. I know that he can catch. I know that he can get behind defenses and compromise them. I think what if you come to the conclusion that it's anybody else other than them, what are you saying about the receivers? that Like, Stephon Diggs is a good receiver. He's a true number one receiver. Jamar Chase, arguably the best receiver in the league next to uh, Justin Jefferson. Those are good receivers. Those are teams that don't need another receiver. I think that you could reasonably make the argument that Joe Burrow has gotten accustomed to it and is and likes having both of those guys, but you see his numbers with or without T. Higgins on the field, they're about the same. Slightly better, honestly, with Jamar Chase and no T. Higgins. So I think it's obvious that it's uh, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I won't go there. Uh, and I like Higgins. He's very good. I won't go there because they won two Super Bowls already without a great receiver. And I got Kelsey, who I count as the great receiver anyway, as the tight end. So as a result, I'm not going to Kansas City. Cincinnati does have Chase, who's great. I am down on Diggs. I'm down on him. Oh, well, uh, he yeah. had a terrible – he dropped the, – they would have won the game. He dropped, If you are that good and claim you're that good, catch the ball in the game against Kansas City on the bomb. He catches that ball in their last drive. Buffalo beats the Chiefs, and Buffalo might have won a Super Bowl. He had a wide-open pass. He caught it. They would have had a first down at the Kansas City 30-yard line with 2.20 to go in the game. I can't with you. Just boiling uh, everything down the, to one play. Well, I mean, one you got, play. That's, so that's what championships I'll, are won, though, Dom. It's one play. I agree. That doesn't mean it. Big time one play. players <laughs> make big time nah, plays. Yeah, you're cooking with gas. So the only reason you why. You look good, you feel good. You want me to keep going? Shout to Dion. Yeah, feel, feel good, good you play, play good. good. You play, play good, good, they, they pay, pay good. Tyree yeah. Ty Ty <laughs> doesn't make that <laughs> catch against the Patriots off his helmet. All right, but let's be honest. Let's be honest. Do you have more moments than that, or you're just down on no, that's that it. one that's digs moment. I'm down on digs. You know, moment. digs throwing his helmet. Why? He's a little oh, bit. Oh, there, there we go. go. Here there we go. go. Here we go. So, Here we go. So it's not, not about. What's the matter? It's not no. about the play it's on the not. field. It's, it's not about. You didn't like these. Oh, you didn't like how he conducts You like the way he conducts himself? I mean, I don't get involved in all that. I love the way that he conducts himself. You know what? You know what? Wow. You know what? Gotcha. Josh Allen was not the Josh Allen that we know Talk about it. until Talk Stephon about Diggs it. got there. Hello. Josh Allen struggled against man coverage. Josh Allen had people saying, see, you shouldn't have drafted him at that spot. You know who shows up to the rescue? Stephon Diggs. And his ability to beat man coverage is what bought Josh Allen the time to become the quarterback that he is now. I'm not saying that now that uh, Josh Allen can't live without Stephon Diggs, obviously he could towards the end of last season. They did just fine without um, focusing on Stephon Diggs, but he still has gravity on the field. So if this is a debate about how good Stephon Diggs is, this to me oh, is a different conversation and a waste of time. Him. You guys However, have him. However, what the first thing, the first argument you made is part of the problem is Patrick Mahomes has created these expectations. Mm -hmm. And as someone who is like incredibly awesome, I understand how it feels, is people want you to be awesome all the time. Sometimes you need a little help. Like, I'm sure you don't understand what this feels he's like, but so sometimes right you need a little help. And just because he's won a couple Super Bowls in a row does not mean that their roster does not have weaknesses. I'm with their you. Roster has I'm, weaknesses. I'm, you making sense, except for the somebody who's pretty no, awesome it's, it's, myself. No, I know. I'm okay. accustomed to it. It's tough. All right. So, Doggy, I'm disappointed in you. What are you disappointed in <laughs> me for? Uh, so many you guys, things. You so guys many are things. loving so, digs. So you are, I'm down on I'm you. Not, <laughs> what are you throwing me on the bus for? I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I'm a journalist. I asked people. the questions. I dug, and I got to the root of it. Which, boom. boom. Um, but, so my answer is different from both of you. I think Joe Burrow needs um, T. Higgins more because it's it's not just, we're talking about the Eagles and what makes them so so frightening. It's like, well, where are the whole, like where are you gonna like stop them? Like they've got two great wide receivers. They've got a great running back. They've got a great tight end. Right? When I look at the Bengals. Like, just because they have Jamar Chase doesn't mean that, oh, well, they're good with just him. Also, keep in mind, Tyler Boyd. Like, the three of them together is, and Joe Mixon playing better, is what got them to that Super Bowl, too, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So now we've got Joe Mixon gone. You've got 
Tyler Boyd potentially gone. You got this organization that has never been hard pressed to say, oh, you want to trade? Okay. They might sit there and not trade him, right? But you also have, keep in mind, offensive tackle Jonah Williams gone to Arizona. Like, there are other things that when I look at this Cincinnati offense where just because your point about Patrick Mahomes, like, just because he doesn't need it doesn't mean he shouldn't have it. Right. That would be my argument for Joe. Okay. Well, well, just that would be my argument for Joe Burrow as well. Fine. Then get him a tackle. What he don't need is another number one receiver. Like, I like the idea of keeping him there to make this run on a franchise tag. I don't hate that idea at all. Okay. But making the point that he needs him more, he does not need him more than Patrick Mahomes. And Kelsey's great, but Kelsey's not stretching the field the way that a true but, number one receiver would. But I'm going to flip your point about the Chiefs. Like, you're saying, why make Patrick Mahomes' life harder? get him a true number one, except we have seen Patrick Mahomes do more with less. So when you talk about need, okay. the counter to that is I've seen the Bengals get to the Super Bowl and not win it. Agreed. So why strip so, from a team that we haven't seen because, get to the Super Bowl? Because, because we have a salary cap. I would love to, dis to do away with the salary cap also. But the fact of the matter is you're going to have to make some decisions. And we saw that the Chiefs made the decision to move on from Tyreek Hill. And there are certain – so, like, we talk about Kirk Cousins. We don't think Kirk Cousins – or I don't think Kirk Cousins is a Super Bowl caliber quarterback without a lot of help around him. Jared Goff, another example. I think that Joe Burrow is a step above that. I think he's better than them. So you know what you do when you have a guy like that, like Patrick Mahomes, who can lift the people around them? I'm not saying get rid of Chase and Higgins. I'm not even saying get rid of Higgins this year. I'm just saying he don't need Chase and Higgins. He's that type of good. Nina, where should Fields land next? I feel like there's only one destination left, to be honest, that makes sense to me, and that's the Las Vegas Raiders. Yes, it would mean a reunion with his offensive coordinator, Luke Getze, which not everyone loves, but right now, the Raiders' plan at quarterback is Aiden O'Connell, played last year, and Gardner Minshew, who, don't let the box score the record fool you, did not play well for the Indianapolis Colts last year. Justin Fields, to me, should be an obvious target for them. I know we're going to throw out places where he could be a backup, and I understand that line of thinking, but I think he showed enough last season for a team to take a flyer on him uh, and see what upside he has as a starter, and the Raiders, to me, are the only team left where that seems yeah. like a viable option. I think it tells you that he's not that great based on the fact that they can't get rid of him. I think Seattle, uh, because the new coach there, he did not say great things about Gino, when he took the job, didn't said the quarterback thing was kind of open. They let Locke go, who signed with the Giants, so they need a backup. Fields could go there and possibly win in Seattle. I think the Seahawks, to me, would be an interesting run. Now, again, Fields is not great in fourth quarters. 73 QB rating in fourth quarters. He's 10 and 11 and 29 as a starter. I'd be a little worried about him if I wanted to make him my starter. But I would say Seahawks. Yeah. Um, so I assume you're talking about the passer rating, and it looks right. slightly different. But I think he, um, Mina, your point about the Raiders, I think is the only place that he could start. But I'm not sure that he would have success there. I think uh, Mad Dog said something that I also disagree with. I don't think the reason why he doesn't have a job is because he's not good. I think he doesn't have a job because people view him as a long-term commitment. So I think where yeah. he should go. I thought the Colts. Then they went and got. Uh, Flacco, because I thought the Colts, he'd go there, and Shane Steichen is really good with these types of quarterbacks who have high-end athleticism, and they have uh, he can back up Richardson. But since that's been filled, I got a little wild card. The Broncos. I think that Sean Payton is the same coach that tried to convince us all that Taysom Hill could play quarterback in football. Remember that? Remember that? He tried to sell us that yeah. Taysom Hill was a starting caliber quarterback. So here you go. This is Tay Taysom Hill turned all the way up. Go I... to the Broncos and build around him. <laughs> <laughs> Taysom Hill turned all the way up is great branding, but I don't think Sean Payton wants the experience of a quarterback who holds on to the ball for too long again. I, I just suspect he wants to move in a different direction. I, I think we're having two different debates here, which is what's best for Justin Fields versus right. what's best for an acquiring team. If we're a team were to acquire him as a backup, not pick up the fifth-year option, to Dominique's point, I think that's what's held a lot of teams back. A ton of teams uh, should be in the yeah. alley. Like the Eagles, to me, jump out as a great destination yeah. for him as a backup because of that dual-threat skill set. But if Justin Fields actually wants the opportunity to start, 
the Raiders are really the only option. Um, and I think they should do it, too. I, if I was a Raiders I fan, I would very much so want them to do this. You're right, and I don't disagree with you from the Raiders' perspective. But from Justin Fields' perspective, you need to go somewhere where you can potentially have enough success that people will believe that you're a starting quarterback. I have a hard time believing that that situation is going to end with the Raiders balling out and Justin Fields at being elevated to where he was to where to um, solidify his draft or to prove his draft uh, position. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Antonio Pierce is going to change everything and they'll be so much better. But there are other issues on that team. So maybe Justin Fields can put him on his back. But then it's the other thing that you mentioned off the top that you undercutted yourself immediately. So you wouldn't allow us to. You want him back with Luke Getzey? That's you really want him back with Luke? I listen. Uh, that would be the <laughs> one thing I'd have on that. I was surprised when they hired Lucchesi. To be honest, uh, it is that makes it a little bit less. But you know, it's not a horrible situation. You do get to play with Devonte Adams, obviously right. um, some young skill player, Jacoby Myers. I mean, it's a better skill group than you had in Chicago throughout most of your tenure there. So I don't think it's a worse situation than there. Which ain't saying much, but I, I mean, I think to Mad Dog's point about the Seahawks is you see um, Gino is a guy who's done what I think uh, Fields wants to do. It's like, rough start to your career, bounce back to... Uh, and they got three good receivers. They got three... He got some weapons in Seattle. I could see that. I got destroyed today. Everybody no. outplayed me. No, he no, outplayed me. Me and it killed We're on the me. Same I team. will not and sit you here threw me under the bus. and let you same slander team. yourself and beat yourself down. You threw Pick me under the bus. Pick your head up. You're a mad dog. We're You're an icon. Ladder.